All right, so this week we got a special guest, uh, starting safety at Princeton, Trevor Ford. So how you been doing, my boy? Man, I've been chilling, bro. Just taking it day by day. I feel you. I feel you. So just to get into the interview, like, so coming out of high school, like, what made you pick Princeton? Uh, <clears throat> Princeton was like my second offer. And uh, I didn't know much about the Ivy League, you know. I think everybody got their own stigma about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, guys, cardigans and sipping tea and stuff. And I ain't really know. <laughs> they, I know that wasn't me coming out of Memphis. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I knew it was a great opportunity, great education. They had some good football. I just didn't know how it was. So I was skeptical. And my, my dad was just like, give it a try, give it a try, go take a visit. You might yeah. like it. Got up there, met some cool dudes, love the coaching staff, love the campus. And I mean, once I once I realized I could fit there, it was it was a no brainer. Plus, like them showing early interest was a was a big one for me because I was kinda waiting, late into my recruiting process for yeah. some team off of me. But like looking back on it, I'm I'm glad I chose a team that I knew wanted me from my, like, you know, get go. From the jump. And so, you know, talking about that, you know, well, I should have said this to start off when I introduced you, you know, me and you went to high school together, you know, White oh, yeah. Station in Memphis. So, anyway, so how was that just, like, that transition going from, you know, Memphis, White Station High School to Princeton all the way in New Jersey? Man, it was big. I'm not going to lie. It was it was definitely a culture change, culture shock. Uh, yeah. Everything from, like, when I first got up there, just the weather, like in the morning, <laughs> even it's cold. Like I'm wearing a jacket. Okay. Uh, people, the people can understand me, you know, because you know when you, when you're from Memphis, you're around Memphis, you don't hear no accent. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We, it's, it's normal to us, but bro, when I first got there, people couldn't understand me. Like I was repeating myself like like three or four times every time I said something, and it was worse when it was on the football field, bro. Like. Yeah. And I had to, because they had me playing nickel. So when wow. I was in, I set the defense. And they, could, they, they couldn't understand what I was they, – they could understand. They could make it out. But, like – But it took I, a minute. I got, I got teased for it a little bit. But it was just all, all in good fun. Yeah. So so but, what um, was that first reaction like when you said jump? What did you say? I said, what was that first reaction like when you said, like, told somebody, like, pass me that jump or something like that? <laughs> I'm like, there was so much, so much lingo, yeah, and and just like vocabulary that we use that they just, I would say something, and I just I wouldn't get a reaction out of it, so I had uh -huh. to I had to clarify in simpler terms basically, and I mean yeah. it, it was funny, I definitely they didn't pick up on it. People closest to me they kind of used to it now, but it was, it was a struggle at first. And so you know, talking about that transition. I guess it kind of helped that, you know, you're a ball player because that's all White Station produces. So, you're right. like, what do you feel, like, helped you, like, start as a true freshman, you know, at a D1 big-time program? Uh, I think I think coming in just with a, with a humble mindset was probably the biggest thing. Um, the coaches, the coaches liked me from the jump, but yeah. they weren't going to give it to me, you know. It was kind of like whoever went out there and – and worked for it. And I had another good thing was like the, the leadership in the DB room. Um, senior guys, the junior guys, the leaders of that room, the, the veteran guys, like there was no hate, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, you know, if you were a ball player, yeah, love. Whoever, whoever played, play. So it's like yeah. the dude I was competing with that was above me, he giving me pointers, you know what I'm saying? He, he's trying to help me out. And then once I got the starting spot, he still, like, you know, he still helped me. I wasn't no hate. I never no hatred. They're still one of uh, good friends. I still talk to him. You know sure. what I mean? And we, we chop it up real so once in a while. And, you know, it's it's all love. has been genuine since the jump. That's a, that, I think that was a big thing for me because it gave you, like, more confidence when you when you knew it was, like, you know, genuine trust and, and love in the room. And there wasn't a lot of animosity. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that for sure. Especially, you know, coming from a senior, being that guy. Then all the way back down at the ladder, it's almost like you got to like just reestablish yourself. So yeah. you know, continuing talking about Princeton, like how you feel like playing in the Ivy League is kind of like a different experience than playing like D one FBS ball. Yeah, for sure. It was uh, 
I don't know. It's different. It's definitely not. Um, it ain't. You know, no power five school or nothing. But yeah. it's, it's it's good ball for sure. It's some some good athletes. Um, some good competition all around the league. You know, we consistently in our leagues always. Since I've been there, we at least had one, sometimes two, sometimes three people in the top twenty-five in FCS rankings. Uh-huh. You know, that's good ball. And I mean, I think I was kind of prepared for that because coming out of Memphis or coming out of White Station, where like White Station specifically, where you know we produced, we got three three NFL receivers right now. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. our teammates with. <laughs> <That'd be fun. laughs> so, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? That competition I've seen every day, and then, like, the big names we were facing, all these guys that's playing at Power Five schools, or, you know, in the in the league right now. Like, you know, the competition been there since yeah. since I transitioned from high school to college. So, it was always a high level and a high standard. Mm-hmm. And so, like, talking about, like, the differences a little bit more, like, how do you feel, like, that academic workload is combined with like the football workload. Like you said, y'all are still playing high level football, but y'all got that academic burden on y'all back too. So I would like talk about that a little bit. So, uh, so at White Station, you know, like we know, White Station was yeah. challenging, uh, even as a like the most challenging public school out there. That's they, you know, is respected around the country, whatever it may be. But yeah. at the same time, like. <clears throat> And this this might be the case for most people in high school, but like it, it kind of came. I, don't, I ain't gonna say it came easy, but mm-hmm. it wasn't that much of a, uh, a outside burden. I feel like. And then when you got to college, for instance, specifically, it was like, like you had to be on your stuff to to you know yeah. try to get a P. Where it came from, like high school, it's like you know if I just pay attention a little bit, I'm gonna come out with A. Yeah. Got there. And you definitely like there were people who were more prepared than me who had been through that that kind of I guess like some private schools that give you an, an upper edge in a sense uh-huh. because you you getting like the same like a college style education almost or like a learning style versus public school. But I mean like, you know, I think White Station prepared me more than most people. So I was I was pretty good going in. Um and it it was a shock the first semester, which is probably my hardest semester there, my freshman yeah. fall. I adapted easily. I got you, I got you. So now flipping back over to like the football side of things, like like you said, like Ivy League football is still like legit D one football. So I just wanted to talk about just like that twenty eighteen season where y'all kinda go undefeated, win the Ivy League. Like first time y'all did it since nineteen sixty four. Like just talk about like what that season was like. And like how you guys stay focused throughout like a long season, especially with yeah. everything you got going on academically and things like that. Yeah, that that season, we had a a, a great senior class with a lot of good leaders, and I feel like yeah. that was that was probably the the biggest the biggest win for us and uh, con- like contributed to our success because wow. you know the leadership did start with the coaches. And our coaching staff is great. They, you know, they listen to us. They they do a good job responding to how we feel, you know, treating our bodies right, developing us as players. But <clears throat> I think we were really a, a, a player-led team that year. Yeah. And the, the leadership from a player level was amazing. And those guys, they they really taught me, you know, how to be a leader. And, I, like, I was a sophomore oh. trying to, you know, live up to their expectation of me in a, in a sense. And I think that yeah, was, was that, that culture was created basically from them. It was kind of like you went out there and it was, I know it's kind of cliche, but you really were yeah. playing for your, your teammate, the guy next to you, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You looked up to your, to your leaders and the passion that they put into it, the time they put into it. It was just like, you know what I'm saying? You you didn't want to let them down. It wasn't even about you at that point. It was just yeah. making plans for them. That's, a, that's big time, especially like when you're out there playing for like, not yourself, but like for each other, that really helped like what you said, you know, get to that success. But like flipping over to a more individual side, you guys have had like, like I said, y'all have had the team success, but y'all have also put like a couple of guys in the NFL and who are doing, you know, doing well in the league. So, you know, with you being a senior, like, could you see yourself taking that route too? Have you heard anything from scouts, things like that? Uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, you know, playing in the NFL has always been a dream of mine since I was growing up. Yeah. 
uh, like when I first started. But like as as you get older, you kind of you know you you look to different things in life, and you realize that there are more things to life, and football go in one day. Yeah. And I mean, with the cancellation, like it's a very high chance my football career is over. And like I've accepted, I accepted a couple years ago that like you know NFL not for everybody may not be. Yeah. For like, so I'm cool with it. So I'm a guy, like, if I were to have a season come up, mm. I had a breakout season, a great season with some good stats, yeah. and somebody, you know, came looking for me, they want to give me opportunity, I'd take it. But, like, yeah. at the same time, I'm not pressed for it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with where I'm at, uh, and I'm ready to progress in life if, if that's what is supposed to happen. Yeah. Well, I will say one thing you got on your side, you know, you're a four-year starter. You got a lot of takes. They can be what so you know what I'm saying? Yes, but you know, yeah, you got a lot of tape. So speaking of that tape, I gotta ask you: Did you have like a a welcome to college football moment? Uh oh yeah, for sure. My uh, I think it was the second game my freshman year. Yeah, and it was like luckily, <clears throat> I think my my position coach put it the best way. He was like, um, you know, you love when you can learn a lesson, but still win a game. Yeah. Cause I it was it was like fourth quarter, we were up two two three possessions, uh-huh. fourth like fourth and two. So I'm kind of playing aggressive. We were in a man call, and I was kind of hugging the sticks, you know, which uh-huh. is natural. And I got hit with a double move over the top. Oh, that was the quick six on my head. And I mean, you know, what I mean, I hadn't gotten beat in man for a touchdown. My high, my high school career. It yeah. was the first time I had really, you know what I'm saying, got beat one-on-one like that, especially in something like late in the fourth, not late in the fourth quarter, but like enough time for them. That could have been a momentum shift for them, you yeah. know what I mean? And that could have turned around. And if we would have lost that game, like, Lord knows, I would have been on myself. Like, I would have took the blame for yeah. that 100%. But, I mean, we came out with the W, and I think the biggest thing for me to bounce back from that was – the coaches still believing in me and my, my teammates uh-huh. still believing in me and not like picking me up when they saw I was down on myself. But yeah, yeah that was for sure my welcome to college football moment. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, you kinda hit about hit on it like a little minute ago. But like, you know, you guys suspended the season. So y'all aren't gonna be playing this fall, potential to play in the spring. What is your what was your like initial reaction to that happening? And have they said anything about like what the plan is going forward? Uh, initially, it was like it was kind of tough, but it's something I've been prepping myself for since I got sent home in the spring. Yeah. You know? Me and some of my teammates, we we've already we were discussing like that possibility because we knew it was very like you know it, it had a good chance of happening. So we kind of prepped ourselves, but at the same time, like actually hearing it, it still took a toll on you emotionally, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> We Especially when you be working all summer for it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Working all summer, praying that you're going to have a season. And we – uh, they had a meeting where they was going to the, – the presidents were going to discuss it. Mm-hmm. And the, the meeting started at, like, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And kid you not, 5 or 1, there was tweets out talking about how Ivy League just canceled all day for all sports. Mm-hmm. So our meeting wasn't until 30 minutes later where we were going to hear it. Yeah. So we sitting there for 30 minutes, basically knowing that our city is over with, but like still clinging on to a little bit of hope. Like maybe they just rumors, whatever, but you, you know. Yeah. So we got into that meeting and she broke it to us. And I mean, you could see the disappointment, the emotions start running on people on the, on the call. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you, you tell us we may have a chance in the spring. You tell us we may get a chance to come back. Uh, take a semester off and come back in the fall. Like anything, any type of hope that we still have some football and the whole team's like still working. Like we finna play yeah. in the you know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's what I love about our team because uh, they some workers for sure. They some workaholics, yeah. and they love one another. And it's is more so of coming not from an individual standpoint, but you know wanting to be ready so that when we play, you're not letting your teammate down. That's that's yeah. kind of. Coach, I feel like I team taking, and I, that's what I love about it. Yeah, and so I mean, like you seem like a real team first guy. So I want you to talk about yourself for a little minute. Talk <laughs> about yourself for a little minute. Like, what have you been doing to like to like 
stay ready in case like a season comes back. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Well, as you know, because you've been with us. But well, yeah. Um, I want you to talk about it though, because you're the leader. You do it all. It's <laughs> yeah, whatever. But it's a, it's a decent group of us. It's about about six, seven of us. And, man, we've been at it <laughs> every day since we came home. That's one thing I really appreciate um, about White Station because I feel like it instills some hard work and some dedication to the mm-hmm. game at us yeah. and to us. Like, you know, in high school, even back to middle school, we were like that. Yeah. And, uh, same group of guys pretty much. And uh, that's one thing I knew I had when I came back home. I was talking to a few of my teammates, and they were just talking about, you know, how it's kind of hard for them because mm-hmm. – they alone and most of their boys been yeah. home done with football. So they work in now, they gotta find that motivation by themselves. But you know, yeah. with us, you got a group of seven, eight guys that's trying to get out there every day. So you might not be feeling it one day, but best believe if you know, everybody you know, else is you know, he's gonna tell you let's, let's go. And it's also it ain't just getting up and 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 going to, you know what I'm saying, go go where some weight set or go on the yeah. field. That we worked out is actually getting there and being held accountable, you know, saying, yeah. bro, like, don't pick it up. You're not, you're not, you're not taking this for real. And that's that's what I think I like most about it because it's it's still a, a competitive culture with us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like t- today is is me. Yeah, Mikhail. sorry I missed today, bro. That's on me. Yeah, you know, it's cool. <laughs> know he's gonna be there. But we were sitting there with with a group, three guys just got their season canceled. And you know what I'm saying, we still out there working like, like yeah. we got a case in, in a couple of weeks. So the, the competitiveness out of our group back home, I think second to none. My gosh. And so wrap it up, bro. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play a little game called Fourth and Long, bro. I'm gonna ask you four questions, bro. I just want your immediate like immediate reaction answers, you know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, you ready, bro? Yeah. So, first question, who do you model your game at? Every. Second question, with the Madden ratings coming out, who's the best receiver in the league? D-Hop. All right. And would you rather be on the Forbes list or the Heisman Watch list? Forbes list. And last question, can you guard me? Lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you believe that. I'll let you believe that for now. But I appreciate you checking in with us. I hope, you know, everything goes well. I hope we all get a season, you know, upcoming. And, you know, just thanks for coming on with us, bro. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me on, bro.